Hey guys, how's it going? Let's see, let's get started here. Got to reconnect Facebook after it gets streaming. This is always the fun part, right? <laughs> uh, okay, let's try it. Reconnecting to Facebook. Hey, there we go. Now we're seeing some people. Still no Facebook. Come on. All right, all right. Hold on a second. Just tell them the <laughs> just tell them the the Pixel peeps that Facebook is having issues again. Man, Facebook. They they do not want you to stream to them, I guess, from yeah <laughs> let's see yeah more yep they do I, I actually have some led lights over there see this little remote control i can control those lights i i put these led lights they're like little discs up and up underneath and i can change the colors of them like yellow or blue or whatever <laughs> anyway i've just kind of set them to work back there Okay, it looks like uh, YouTube's working. Okay, I'm just gonna try and reconnect with fa with Facebook one more time. Still not working. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Thank you for joining me today on this lovely Monday. Uh, it's getting close to Halloween, so I figured I would do a another Halloween stream, and I want to do. Um, I was thinking about doing a vampire. What do you guys think? Um, last year I did a Frankenstein's monster. So this year um, I was thinking about doing a stylized vampire. Might be kind of fun. Hey, what's up, Alex, over on YouTube? How you guys doing, Sunil? <laughs> All right, let's do a let's do a, a let's do a vampire, stylized vampire. Well. Pixelogic's looking into what the heck is going on with, uh, yeah. Okay, I have Facebook going so I can see. All right, here we go. Hey, what's up, Caitlin? How you doing? Okay. So, uh, this is what we're going to do. Oh, thanks. Uh, cool background. So, this, this is my user interface, and I give it away for free. I'll just throw that out there right away. <laughs> Um, you guys that keep watching me every week, you already know it, so I apologize for repeating myself, but uh, you can find my user interface, my brushes, and this ruler file over on uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Uh, I give it away for free, and uh, yeah, not Teen Wolf. <laughs> I, I don't think I could do that kind of hair in, an, in a couple hours, so we're just, gonna, we're just gonna work it out. Hey, what's up, Barry? All right, so we're gonna start with the sphere like I usually do. And a lot of people, a lot of my students and people that watch me, they see this sphere or they go get my ruler file. They're like, how do I start with this low resolution sphere? Usually when you're on your streams, you have a high resolution sphere to start with. And that's true, usually I do. I like to have this low sphere just to have something this low if I want to uh, start that way. A lot of times, um, I, it's, it's harder to go lower than it is to go higher. That's why I have this low to start. So what I like to do is just subdivide this once. So control D will subdivide it once. I can show the poly groups right here. And then I just delete lower subdivision levels. So if you go over here under geometry and just hit delete lower, that'll go away and now it doesn't have any subdivisions anymore and it's higher resolution. So. Oh, Luigi has a What We Do in the Shadows. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he did kind of that whole series of those, right? Those are great. I love those things. All right. Hey, what's up, Silence? Silence? That's a cool way of spelling that. All right. Hey, what's up, Smartest? A Teen Wolf would be amazing. Yeah, especially if I could get uh, the likeness right, right? <laughs> okay. Hey, Andre. 
How you doing, man? Okay. So let's, and I, under this um, in, insert multi mesh brush that I give you guys, you can get, um, it just comes with these primitive shapes. Um, <laughs> you can do it. Uh, I honestly, Steve, and I would if I could, if I had confidence that I could do fur very quickly, which I can't unless I use fiber mesh. I want to do stylized fur. I need to come up with a better fur brush, you know, something that I like. Maybe, maybe I will. I know you've made a fur brush, right? Anyway, hey, what's up, Chris? Okay. Um, so, for this guy, uh, no, no ref. I'm just going to kind of shoot from the hip with this guy. I'm just going to make a vampire. Here we go. Let's see where he ends up. Um, okay, here we go. So, I mean, I kind of, I kind of have an idea in my head of what I want to do, but Hey Fabian, Swiss, nice, thank you for joining me today. What time is it over, are you in Switzerland? What time is it in Switzerland? Okay. I keep getting notifications that you guys are going, <laughs> going over to my website and grabbing my brushes, that's great. A little notification pops up, hey, somebody's grabbing your brushes. So that's, uh, that's always fun. I wanna give this guy a super weak chin no no concept i do have reference on my second monitor just of like draculas and vampires and things like that just to kind of give me an idea of what they look like um and i just kind of have an idea of what i want to do <laughs> what's up what's up matt how's it going red beard in the house matt is another streamer on here and uh he is a he is a new dad again, right? How's the how's the kiddo? All right, let's see. Matt, I never do this, but I'm actually modeling not from a reference this time. <laughs> let's see how it goes. My my brain typically doesn't like to do that. <laughs> Yep, yep. Let's see what happens. Uh, yeah. Hey. Oh, hey, Shaswata. How, how's it going? Over on YouTube? All right. Oh, it's 2017 over in Switzerland. Crazy. Well, I'm glad you could join me today. Thank you so much. GNR, this is ZBrush. Okay, like I said, I want to give this guy a really weak chin. Um, kind of a... Uh, I'm just going to experiment with this guy. I still don't know what's going on with Facebook. I haven't heard from... Oh, here we go. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Sorry, I'm just trying to reconnect to Facebook. All right, looks like comments are going. Okay, okay. So I'm looking at, this is gonna slow me down just a little bit. I'm looking at Facebook comments over on actual Facebook instead of in my app, so um, might be a little slow. Thanks, Neil. All right, is it a monkey? <laughs> No, it's not a monkey. Hold on. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks. All right. Oh, yeah, the Zebra Summit was fantastic. Did I miss any? Okay. Sorry, I'm being slow. I kind of want his head to, to do one of these things so I can put hair on the top. I don't know if you guys remember my um, Frankenstein last last year, but see see how his head is kind of shaped. This this is one. This isn't the final one, but he's pretty close. Um, you can see how his head is kind of shaped like this, and yeah, I really like the way this guy turned out. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think this was an Adam Manoa design. I no, who did this? 
I'm trying to remember who did the original concept. But um, anyway, I kind of want it to fit in the same, you know, like it's his friend or something. They have the same kind of head. So I'm going to go off of what I usually do with this skull and just kind of go, go crazy with it. Just kind of make his head, break his head for a minute and then I'll fix it. <laughs> okay, we'll see what happens. And then I do want his forehead to kind of slope up there. And then finish in the back. <laughs> You're right, Mord. Frankenstein's monster, sorry. Frankenstein's monster. I got it right the first time I said it, and then the second time, nope. I said Frankenstein. That's like the most commonly, common mistake ever, right? <laughs> okay. And again, super weak chin, here we go. And I want him to have a super duper pointy nose. So, I actually have this appendage that I love to use for things like super pointy noses. Hey, what's up, Wipeout? Respect the doc. It's the Frankenstein that made him. It's his monster. He's not the monster. Or is he? <laughs> okay. Just kind of this hooked, want this hooked nose. <laughs> Frankenstein's monster is called Adam. Is that what he named his monster? I've never heard that before. That's funny. Okay, let's see. And then we're just going to pull in his eye sockets like we do. I want him to have really, uh, Really heavy eyelids too. It's like dopey eyelids. It's in the book. I don't think I've ever read the book, to be honest. Okay, let's see. I need to make his jaw kind of go like this. This is what happens when I go rogue. Go off concept, go off the rails. Hey Martin, how's it going? Welcome to the stream, you guys. This wonderful Monday. His cheeks are really huge. He's looking like a pumpkin or something. Okay, then I want to give him kind of these pointy, almost elfish ears. Yep, the work. Yep, the workshop is still open. I have not. <laughs> I've not closed it since I opened it for the ZBrush Summit. And we're about to end the Halloween challenge for the students. I have this, my students doing the Halloween challenge right now, and the challenge is to do. Uh, to do a collectible, like if you were doing a, I, I kind of said like a Hallmark collectible. You know, those little, those little figurines you see at, Wal or at uh, Hallmark, something like that. Just something you could print out and set on your desk. Now a couple things that um, new, new students tend typically get wrong is the, where the ear connects to the head. So just so you guys know, uh, just some some tips for you. His nose is too low. <laughs> it's like way down here. Hold on a sec. I gotta fix that really fast before I explain. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Okay. Um, a lot of students will get the ear. So where the ear connects, like here. Let's get one of these. Like right here, right? It's it's about halfway from the front of the head to the back of the skull. The connection is about halfway. 
then um, where the top of the ear connects is about straight back from the, um, the side of the eye, like where the eye makes that point. If you go straight back, that's where it kind of connects. And you can, you can fudge that a little bit when you're doing stylistic characters, but typically this is kind of a good place to start. And then you can either move the ear back a little bit or maybe a little forward a little bit, maybe up or down. Um, it's easier to stylize the lower connection right here. Like make it, if you want to make a smaller ear or a larger ear, just make sure the top connection lines up with that eye and it's, uh, it's better. Hotel Transylvania. Oh yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. The one the at, oh, what's, um, we just barely picked up Hotel Transylvania 3, I think. It's pretty good. Oh. You're looking, you're looking at my head right here? Yeah, see that? Well, that's why glasses work, right? Because they're, they're going straight back and hooking to, to your ear where your ear connects. You know, that's, <laughs> that's something to think about. Okay, what was the green triangle thing? So it's just so, the selection tool, select lasso right here. If you, if you turn on select lasso and you hold down control plus shift, you can draw any shape you want. Um, and how that works is anything inside that green shape, when you let go, will be shown. So, I, I just use that as a pointer. So, I can, make it, I, I can make it the shape of an arrow, like this, and then point. <laughs> That's all. Okay, I can make it red, too. It's kind of fun to make it red. Uh, red. Anyway, okay. So let's uh, let's get a neck on this guy. Mm -mm -mm. Oh man, itchy nose again today. I don't know what it is when I stream. All of a sudden, my nose itches. <laughs> it's like, who knows? What kind of a skinny neck on this guy? Uh, da -da -da. And then you can kind of just pull his neck down into what you'd think his body would look like. I want to have a very high Dracula collar on him. So I do want him to have kind of a long neck. And then we'll do a big Dracula collar. Stream allergy. Yeah, there you go. Okay, and I want to have him uh, just have a really kind of funny derpy mouth, but we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Okay, typically at this point, what I like to do is uh, remesh this. So I'm gonna divide it once, just to, so I have it smooth, and then just remesh. Yeah, it kind of looks like Pennywise. <laughs> um, I can delete the lower, uh, let's do Z remesher but I want it low. Let's try 2000 and see what that gives us. Okay, maybe a little higher. Three, three means 3000, there we go. <laughs> yeah, Joe Olson, I miss that guy. <laughs> okay, let's see here. I'm gonna make him have a super weak chin. And I'm gonna push the sides of his head in a little more. And I really want to get that, the shape of his head to kind of do that, that shape. Whoop. <laughs> I don't know what you'd call it. Even his forehead, we'll get there. Probably a little too tall to smooth that back out. All right. Okay, I want to merge this together. Um, I'm trying to think if I want to do the eyelids now. Probably. Yeah, there you go, like a peanut. <laughs> Shaped like a peanut. Okay. 
Yeah, let's put the eyes in. Why not? Why not? I'm making pretty good time today. Okay. I want those to be straightforward. So I, I always, I keep saying this during the stream, but it's important, so I'm gonna say it again. Whenever you're drawing an insert multi-mesh like this, you can hold down shift to snap it to a straight on location. But as you'll notice, those spheres are not straight with the uh, axis of the world. That's because they will align themselves to the last known position of the gizmo. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna undo this and unhide the gizmo. And look, you can see how the gizmo is on a tilt right here from the last time I used it. All you have to do is hold down Alt and click on this circle arrow thing, and it will realign that, that gizmo to be straight with the world. Then if I hit Q to hide the gizmo and go back into draw mode, I can draw out the eyes. And then if I hold Shift, it will align with the world now. You can see that. And yes, I want to have him have big eyes. I'll push him into his head. Probably overlap him. Okay. There you go. And I'll typically put the eyeballs in a different subtool. And the easiest way to do that is while it's still masked like this, you can just hit, uh, oh, this is my custom menu. It comes with my user interface, which I have set to hotkey number two. And then I have uh, hotkey two set to the, the back button on my pen. So I can actually pull that menu up anywhere. And then I'll just pull it up. Do I see Ashley in the house? What's up, Ash? How's it going? A cubed, another streamer. A wild Ashley has appeared. <laughs> How's it going? Okay, split to unmask points is what I want to do. Are you streaming tomorrow? So if you want something, uh, a scary monster Halloween-y, <laughs> Ashley's the one to watch. I think she's streaming tomorrow. Okay. You would think I'll Dynamesh, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> I'll show you. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here and I want to adjust the, the face. Oh, Wednesdays. Okay, sorry, my bad. Wednesdays. So Ashley streams on Wednesday, Wednesdays. And if you want to know a schedule, here I'll show you guys. If you just search for ZBrush Live, it'll come up like this. And you just go to ZBrush Live. So pixelogic.com forward slash ZBrush Live. And I'm here live right now. If you click on presenters right here or schedule, um, you can find all the presenters right here, and here's Ashley right here. Here's myself, and uh, Eamon, he went earlier today. Let me see, he's right here, and if you're into 3D printing, he's a fantastic one to watch. And uh, Ashley does these fantastic monsters out of her brain. I don't know where she finds them, but they're in there, and she <laughs> pulls them out and makes awesome monsters. So uh, then if you want to see broadcast schedules, you just click here. And it will show you when that person is going to be streaming live. And if you follow this channel, Pixelogic, you will be notified when the next streamer goes live. So you can see her fantastic creatures right here. So check her out later this week. All right, what am I missing? Caitlin, <laughs> time for my special move. My special move. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do that shortly after I make the eyelids for this guy. Okay, he's looking a bit like a pumpkin because he's uh, red and white. <laughs> okay, so let's make, some, let's make some eyelids. What I like to do making eyelids is I just duplicate. Which Danny? Oh, missing in action? Is Danny not around? Are you talking about um, Danny Mac? Okay, I'm going to duplicate these eyes so you can see that there's uh, another set. And what I like to do is just grab this clip curve brush. I can solo this right here. And even though these are um, crossing in the center, it doesn't matter. 
and I click clip them up like so. So what happens is, uh, oh man, I'd love to give you shout outs, Ashley. You always, you always return the favor when I pop in your stream. So it's, it's no problem. I really appreciate it too. Um, so what I like to do with that clip brush, basically if you hold down control plus shift and drag, it will make this dotted line with this faded black um, area going down. It depends on which way you drag the line. If you drag from left to right, that fade will be on the top. And if you drag from right to left, the fade will be on the bottom. And what that is, I don't know why it's called a clip brush. They should have called it a squish brush because essentially what it does is it takes all the geometry and squishes it flat up against that dotted line. And it will take everything from on the faded side of the line and squish it up to that line. So for example, uh, you can see the line right here and I can move it around. So I'm holding control plus shift and I can move it around if I add spacebar. So if I add spacebar, then I can move it around and I can move it anywhere in here, let go, and it's going to take all that geometry and squish it to that line. Um, there is an actual trim curve brush that will cut the geometry, but it will add a bunch of triangles where it cuts it. So I typically don't use that. I use the, the, the squish brush, which is actually the, the clip curve brush. Okay. Hulk brush mash, <laughs> for sure. Hey, from Spain, how are you? And hello over on Facebook. Sorry, Facebook's kind of over here and I'm, I'm not paying as much attention to it as I usually am because the uh, chat isn't working today for some reason, but I can see chat. So thank you for watching me over on Facebook, hello. Okay, so here are the upper eyelids for now and then I'm gonna duplicate the eyeballs again and we're just gonna make the lower ones. So I'm just gonna clip it, clip these off. So here's the lowers, okay? Now what I wanna do is I wanna merge those back in to the, the head. Hey, what's up, Steven? Okay, I'll merge these back into the head. And there we go, gotta have the preview. So I wanna put my eyeballs on the bottom of this list because I don't wanna merge them. So I'm just gonna hit the down arrow to put them on the bottom. I'm gonna go back up to the head here, and then I'm just gonna to go to merge, merge down, okay, merge down again, okay. Now I have my eyeballs, or eyelids in here. Facebook chat's broken for a week, really? Oh, geez. Oh, it's not working for you either. Yay, I'm not the only one. I mean, it sucks. It really sucks, but I'm just glad I'm not doing something wrong, you know? Facebook is really changing up their algorithms for uh, streaming to ZBrush Live, which is really weird. Um, also, you'll notice whenever you merge um, the subtools together, it will recolor the polygroups, which is strange, but it gives you a better color than if you Z remesh. I don't know why. I actually like the colors. They do a like like a nice uh, gradiated. Uh, saturation like all these purples are really nice you can see these pinks and purples um, it doesn't do it to the the actual whatever you are you you just merged it'll leave those alone but what you started with it will recolor which is crazy anyway just this little side note <laughs> it's just weird oh man okay let's see what I want to do now is I want to get these eyelids into their own poly group so basically what I just said how it's recoloring everything I'm gonna mess it all up because I'm gonna regroup it so it doesn't matter. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do is hit auto group, and that's gonna put every object into its own group, which is, now you can see all the eyelids are in their own, own groups, but I want them symmetrical. So what I'm gonna do is do a mirror and weld, which will do this. Now they're in their symmetrical poly groups, and uh, now I can start opening them up. So I wanna make sure solo is off, and I can start just editing these eyelids. And what I can do is control click on one of the groups, the eyelid groups, and just start. I don't really care that I'm gonna mess up the, the shape of the eyelids because it's, I just don't, I don't care that much. <laughs> if, it's not, if, if it's not a sphere anymore, I just want it generally in the location of a sphere. Okay, and I'm gonna kinda keep him sleepy eyed. I want him to kinda be like, ha ha, you know, like, a, a, I don't know, like a sinister, a sinister guy, but funny. 
okay, yep, he's going to be kind of asleep, just waking up, an old guy. I want to give him some eye bags underneath his eyes, stuff like that. So here we go. I'm going to clear that out, and um, I'm going to edit the lower eyelids. Pull those out and down. So he's just kind of waking up. <laughs> Mosquito Man, how did you know? How did you know? Mosquito Man. Okay. And I want him to have these really big eyelids. Like really crazy tall. Okay, come on. There we go. So it's going to be a mixture between um, raising these eyelids up and then pushing the brow in. That's what's so nice about... Um, keeping things primitive, like these primitive shapes. This is a lot of people go, why? Why do you keep it primitive for so long? And the reason is for edit editability, easily editable, edited, whatever you want to say. <laughs> Can't talk today. Okay, and I want to I want to actually bring his eyes in closer together, make his brow big. Um, fan, I'm just kind of, I mean, I have some reference off to the side on my other monitor, but for, for most of it, I'm just kind of winging it. I'm going to have him have these really high brows. Okay, and then pinch these brows just so you can kind of see where they're going to be. I want him really high, going up into his forehead. And then back down around here, like so. Not too, not too sharp, though. Just kind of high like that. All right. Oh, thanks so much, Phantom Power. I appreciate it. Yeah, Smartest. So you guys, if, if you don't know, Smartest is uh, Steven Anderson. And uh, he did a presentation, a fantastic presentation with Zach Petrock at the ZBrush Summit. Good job, Steven. Did a great job. Um, so you can watch that back if you do a, a search for ZBrush Summit 2018. You can find that. It was a great show. Actually, you've got to make it down there sometime. I would love to meet you in person and hang out. No pressure. I know it costs a lot of money. Aren't you East Coast? Hey, Seagull. How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Okay, now I'm going to, um, before I combine this, I want to, I'm going to make the mouth right now. Let's see, do I want to make it right now or after? So it doesn't really matter if you, if you do it before or after, but I, I kind of want to keep my Z remeshing to a minimum, if that makes sense, because every time you Z remesh, you lose some of the details. Not that this guy has a whole bunch of details, but um, you'll, like, for example, these, these eyelids and things like that. So, um, you just, I, I want to, uh, I want to avoid Z remeshing so much. So I think I might put the eyes in after. Okay, and I just want these a little closer so it, um, it goes down to this nose. Whoa. Next year, that'd be great. Come hang out with us at the cantina. We, there's this there's this place in Hollywood. It's called the Scum and Villainy Cantina, and it's themed like the the Star Wars Cantina on Tatooine, kind of. I mean, the closest they can get without copyright infringement, <laughs> you know. Okay, let's see. And I do want to give him some crazy little uh, n nose folds. Yep, and they do, they serve a drink called blue milk. It's true. 
Um, the, not last year, but the year before that, uh, pic, all Pixel Logic showed up. It was great. Good times. Okay, I'm just going to put in nose folds just to kind of get them in there. <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> oh, man. I was actually thinking it'd be hilarious to actually set up like, like the creature from the from the movie. Like, that's the dispenser. <laughs> Let me go get you some blue milk. Hold on, I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, I'm gonna turn these to be more forward. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> blue. It's really gross. Um, uh, I no they at the, at the at the place at the scum and villain cantina. It's more like a. It's almost like a wine cooler or something that they make. I'm not sure what it is. It's uh. I don't know. It's not the best. <laughs> it's pretty. It's quite blue. It's not like a light blue like the film. It's like uh, like 7-Eleven Slurpee blue. Okay. Trying to make kind of a hole there. Hey, Maz. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. That's awesome. Late jokes take effort. <laughs> From the Milliken. Sorry, and also in text they don't really translate very well. It's kind of kind of difficult. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, all right, let's uh, let's combine these shapes. Now somebody was saying that I'm going to Dynamesh. I used to do that, but I no longer do that. Um, how I do it now is. Um, I'm actually going to remesh this once, just so I can get these nostrils uh, close. Do I want to do that? Let's see what happens when I just subdivide it. Uh, what happened to my... Okay. If you have something masked and you hit subdivide, what it's going to do is it won't actually smooth it when it subdivides it. It just adds more geometry, and that's not what you want because it'll keep all the faceting. It's not good. Not good. Okay. So I'm gonna subdivide that once, delete lower. This is kind of rinse and repeat. I'm gonna change this to 4,000. Hit Z remesher and see what it does, okay. Yeah, that's not bad, that's not bad. Okay, so now what I wanna do is combine this together. Let me see if I want, no. Let me just go one more higher. Okay, that's better. All right, yep, time to stitch. It's stitching time. I'm gonna pull, before I do, I'm just gonna pull the eye sockets back into the head just a little bit more. Okay, just so I can get more of a hollowed out area inside there. So when I stitch it, I have some, some space to work with. You can also um, isolate this and kind of pull these up to make a hollowed out area inside there. Do the same thing down here, okay? And that should make sort of a ring through there. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay, then I unhide my gizmo. A good practice to do is always send your gizmo down to the home. So if you hold down Alt, click on home, it's gonna send the gizmo Home. And then you hold down Alt, tap on this circular, circular arrow, and it's going to reset the orientation of that gizmo. This, that just gives you a better chance of this succeeding when you do that. Then you hit the gear. Then you hit Remesh by Union. And it'll just stitch it together. 
But before I do that, I forgot to duplicate it. I always, you always want to duplicate when you do a big move like this in case you ever need to go back. Okay, I'm going to hide the original, do it one more time, remesh by union, and now it stitches everything together. This is essentially, uh, it's, bo it's live Boolean, which is right here. It's like a live Boolean, but it's, it's not Boolean anything out. It's not, it's not actually subtracting or adding anything. It's just stitching everything together. So it's actually using the same algorithm that, um, I'm going to turn on symmetry and do it again, uh, that live Boolean does, but it just doesn't do any live Booleaning. Okay, so now you click on the gear and hit accept, and now we're good, but now we have stitches. Okay, we can't really sculpt with all of these little triangles everywhere. But what Remesh by Union does is it stitches everything together and it, and it deletes the interior geometry. While, and, but what's cool about it is it doesn't affect the mesh any other way. If you were to Dynamesh this before, um, it would do the same thing, but it would give you a very, very high resolution uh, mesh, and that's not what we want, okay? But before we Z-Remesh, what I wanna do is I wanna give them a mouth. So there's sev there's are several ways I can do it, but kind of my favorite is, um, is masking out an area. Uh, let's see. You turn every time you do a function with the gizmo, like um, re, remesh by union, it will automatically turn off sub symmetry. So you want to make sure that you watch out for that. I just had to turn symmetry back on. So. Um, Maz says, uh, retopology is missed from your work. Um, I don't do retopology during my Pixelogic streams because I don't retopologize inside of ZBrush typically. Unless I'm doing something small like clothing or just a little piece of armor or something like that. But typically I'll take it outside of ZBrush and then I'll retopologize and then I'll bring it back in. So um, since this is a Pixelogic stream, I typically don't show other programs during my stream here. Okay, so it's a good question though, thanks. So I can do this one of two ways. If you've watched my streams before, you've seen me um, make a new poly group and make it a mouth and then just kind of push it in. But this time I kind of want to just do the mask method and I'm just gonna get, get a mask and mask off this area. Um, I actually want it a little lower. I want him to have a really weak chin so what I can do is just kind of mask this area off. It's really low. Okay, something like that. And then I just hit this uh, edge loop mask border. And it'll do something like this, okay? And what I can do now is go to Polish by Features and just roll that up a little bit. And you can see this, this is gonna polish the entire character. Unless I think, it, yeah, it, it let me invert the mask and see. I can't remember if it... Okay, yep, it does take masking into effect. So I'm going to blur that mask so it will affect the just the mouth and then polish by features. I just want to get that mouth kind of rounder like this. So you won't get that round mouth if you do... if you just select the polygons and, and then extrude them into the head. So this is, um, this is a little better method. It, it can shrink the model, yes. What it does is it will polish all of, the, all of the edge loops that are in between poly groups. So it will, it will start to shrink everything. Say, say if there was an edge loop between my fingers, okay? Making, if you can just imagine. What it does is it'll shrink your mesh and it will, it will make the edge loops in between your poly groups sharper. So it kind of goes smooths everything else in between the edges and sharpens the edges themselves. And it will, it will kind of smooth them out, but it'll also make them sharp if you do it too much. So that's why you just kind of just nudge it a little bit. Okay, so now that we have this, I'm just gonna grab the Z modeler, hover over this and just hit polygroup all and just push it in like this. And then, then we have a mouth. Since this isn't going to be a full-on character, I'm not going to really um, do, a, do a crazy mouth interior or anything like that. Basically what I do is I just extrude it in and then use smooth and just kind of smooth it out. Like 
so. And then I, you can kind of come around here and smooth this out. Basically, you just want a hole for the Z remesher to follow, okay? So now that I have that, I'm gonna duplicate it again, hide the original, and then Z remesh. I'm gonna Z remesh this a bit higher. So each time I Z remesh, I kind of go higher because I don't wanna lose the quote unquote details that, I, that are there. So I'm gonna try a seven this time and see what it does. Okay, there we go. And here is my base mesh. We've gotten there in 45 minutes. <laughs> we made a base mesh. And this is essentially what I do every single time is this is, I, I try to get to this point um, before I just start to, uh, to sculpt for real, as it were. Okay, so here we go. Yes, I, I retopologize completely after, like at the very, very end when I'm going to make a, a mesh for a video game or film or television, something like that. If I'm going to go, um, if I'm going to go to, if, just make a 3D print out of him or an illustration, you don't necessarily need to retopologize. You can just use the high, the high resolution version. So, okay. Now we can go crazy. Okay. All right, here we go. Now that we have this mouth, we can just come in and start adjusting it. We can adjust the eyes and just go to town on the rest. So I want him to have very sharp brows. I can turn on dynamic subdivisions. I just hit D and you can see it turns it on over here and it smooths it out. So now it's looking smooth. Even though if I hit Shift D, this is what we're actually working on. This is how the how low it is. Okay, and I can use um, the Sculptors Pro mode at this point if I want to. I, I typically try to stay away from it. Unless I want to add some some crazy detail, which I might. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, then I start to close the mouth. Why is... Okay, there we go. Yeah, I'm just kind of... I, I have some reference, but I'm, I'm kind of making it up. Loosely based on some reference that I have on my other screen. Kind of winging it. That's why I might use Sculptress Pro today. We'll have to see. Because I don't like, like this is probably the worst right here, this transition, it's looking really weird. So I might have to use Sculptress Pro to fix that. Um, the only reason I don't like Sculptress Pro is because sometimes it will, um, it just adds some surface noise that I don't really care for. Oh, thanks, Emma. Okay, I'm gonna give him just a big old kind of lip. Intensity, crank that, there we go. Cause I kind of want him to have like this, this derpy look, like, like you know how um, sometimes Nosferatu has those teeth that are just like two right in the center. And he's like, mm. <laughs> I don't know. That always cracks me up. So I want him kind of derpy and it, just a super weak chin. Thanks, Phantom. Yeah, that's that's kind of that's the same as my my brain, right? It's like just stay away from that stuff. You don't need it. A lot of people just hop to Dynamesh and just start going to town, and it's really not necessary. Okay, let's let's work on this transition to the neck. I might even grab a smooth, stronger brush. Not sure if I need it. Okay. 
No warbles. That's right. No warbles. I hate the warbles. And I really like working in low resolution, the lowest I can get, but still kind of maintaining higher resolution because that way I can use pinch and you know get these really nice clean lines in between everything. I want to pull these eyelids down more. I want to give him, whoops. I want to give him eye, like lower eye bags too. Let me see how much geometry. Ah, I should have enough. Okay. So with this, this is, I hardly use clay buildup because it does introduce some warbles or it can, uh, especially on higher resolution uh, models. But on low resolution like this, I can either use this fill, but fill typically works better on a higher resolution model and clay buildup works better on a low resolution model. So I just want to kind of build this up and have it come down and around here like this and then smooth it back down. Oh yeah, Folygon. You guys, <laughs> I, I keep forgetting your, your names. Anyway, Folygon, he's another streamer on here. Thanks for joining us today. When Folygon, when do you stream again? What's your when's your next stream? So he's another streamer here on Pixelogic. Does fantastic uh, stylized characters. I'm a huge fan. The weakest of chins. Oh, what is the station I'm using? Um, it's kind of it's kind of nuts. I I'm kind of embarrassed about it because it's a little overkill. But I have a it's called a Reason 1700. So this is before the newer chips came out with all the cores. If I probably would have gotten one if they were out with all the cores. Um, but it's a. Uh... Hey, what's up, Craig Kelly? But it's, uh, it has 64 megs of RAM, um, so not, not too crazy. I guess it, it depends on who you are, if that's crazy or not. <laughs> okay. Let me unhide these eyeballs just to make sure they're in the right location. There we go. I can also add... Uh, dynamic subdivision to those yet yeah, I need to fix the the eyelids obviously let's pull those out and reshape them so they're actually looking like they're closed gigs gigs did I say megs <laughs> I don't know 64 gigs of RAM back in my day He looks like an old man, old man vampire. All right. Can I draw? Um, I, I don't know, on a good day, I guess. I typically don't draw much, but I, I, I've been known to draw occasionally. I've, I mean, when I was a kid, I drew a ton. But now I sculpt. I have a sculptor's brain, so I, I like seeing things in three dimensions. All oh, the Megs. Hey, Justin Coley Fields. What's up, man? Good to see you. Thanks for dropping by. I don't know what I'm making today. I'm trying to make a, I'm trying to make a vampire, but so far, He's, he's looking like a tired kid. <laughs> oh my gosh. What are you up to? Not enough gigs for Google Chrome? <laughs> 
yeah, I want him to have smile lines here. I don't have, I'm, I am gonna turn on Sculptress Pro. All right, this is killing me. Chilling at work, nice. I draw, a t oh, that needs a, that needs a drum hit, or a, a cymbal hit. What are those called? <laughs> Okay, all right. This is what Sculptress Pro does. Yep, things will be, things will come later. Okay. So Sculptress Pro, what I usually like to do is wherever I'm going to use it, I will go in and uh, hand tessimate the area. Like It's like a pre-treatment, as it were. <laughs> because it really... You can see it adds texture to the surface. Um, and it doesn't really work well with dy uh, dynamic subdivisions, so I'm actually going to go back and subdivide it once. Let's see. Let's subdivide it down and get rid of the lower subdivisions so I have this higher, higher subdivisions. Now we can do it. Okay. Because... Uh, Sculptress Pro does not work very well with dynamic subdivisions because dynamic subdivisions is actually subdividing the, the quads, right? It's actually t multiplying them by four. And Sculptress Pro is wanting to turn everything to triangles and triangles don't uh, subdivide very well. So turn that off if you're gonna use uh, Sculptress Pro. Rim shot, there you go, thanks. <laughs> Is it safe to continue your project without saving? Yeah, I, I have um, I have Quick Save turned on, and it's saved once or twice. But um, I should probably save it. Thanks for thanks for letting me know. Here, I'm just going to call him Vamp. Oh, my caps locks on Vamp. There we go. All right, and Justin. If you're still here, I need to, I sent you a I sent you a, a PM on Facebook. <laughs> I know you're only on there once in a while. I need to talk to you about those uh, those displays that you're talking about. Okay, get in here and close that up. Pinch brush works really well with for if you want to like pinch the edges of. Uh, eyelids like this you can see what it's doing see how it's really tight awesome thanks dude yeah we should talk <laughs> okay I'm just smoothing out this um, I want to cut in this eye bag more polygon are you back did you miss uh... I was asking I think you were here you, you missed my, mess my messages so I was just asking you, uh, when, when do you stream next? And I was telling everybody I'm a big fan of your stuff. Love it. Super clean. My favorite stuff that, you, <laughs> that you've done are those, the sphere challenges. I, 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 I say you won the sphere challenge in my opinion. Those were so great. Those little, uh, those little characters. Like the goat and stuff, really good. Okay, um, let's see. I want to, I forgot to put in this ear shape. You can always do the same thing. Just kind of mask out an ear shape like this and uh, just go edge loop mask border. It doesn't matter if you're partially uh, Sculptress Pro in here or not. And then you can just grab your Z modeler brush and just push it in. Whoop. Like that. Actually, before I do, I want to do a polish by features just to clean that up. Clean up that edge. And we can do it again. Push that in. Then we can just come back by and smooth this out so it's not so harsh of an edge. Okay. Now this is another area that can use a clean up this connection right here. You can use um, this fill brush and just kind of come in here and fill it. 
<laughs> yeah, man. I need to catch your stream. Okay. Let's get back to working on the mouth. I got to fix this. Uh, moon mix i i guarantee that i will that's i'm i'm still trying to figure out what i want to do for that um yeah i need to figure i need to figure it out okay i need to mask off his upper lip because this topological just is not doing it Whoop. oh punchy ninja <laughs> Did it not? I haven't tried it yet. I was I was told that it did shift hue, but I haven't tried it yet. Is that not not good? Oh, thanks. He must be busy, distracted. <laughs> okay, there we go. I just need to get. I want to push this lower lip up really high up underneath there there we go that's what i wanted <laughs> okay and then i'm going to make a spot for his uh his teeth coming out here i'm going to insert his teeth right there and then have his little lower lip Okay, what are we looking at? An hour in? Okay, let's inflate this lip some more. That's a lot, a lot of inflation happening. And then I want a little weak chin, a little bumpy little chin. Oh, yeah. Dude, I was like Mr. Distracto. I was just asking when you stream next, but uh, Mordekiner answered. You stream tomorrow at 3 Pacific? When you stream. When do you stream? <laughs> okay. I need to get this smile line actually correct here. Smooth this out. It looks like kind of kind of's getting kind of's. What kind of word is that? It kind it's kind of looking Yoda-ish. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. I have a giant Yoda behind me. Oh, it's six Eastern. Okay, six Eastern. So are you East? Are you East Coast guy? Blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> Let's give him some super pointy ears too. Love the pointy ears. I'm going to get the hair in there, get the widow, widow's peaks and all that business going on. It'll be good times. There we go. Okay, I want a better shape to this. A spooky sculpt. What is it? What do you mean? Is there like a contest or something happening? I'm just doing it for Halloween. You know. But I'm not doing it for any particular reason other than Halloween. 
I'll leave it up to you guys if it's spooky. <laughs> but I don't know if you're talking about like a certain themed something. Yep, he's going to look like Count Dracula a little bit. Okay. Um, I want his eyelids a little sharper up top here. Very... Oh, if I put it in red wax, that will be spooky. <laughs> so yes, spooky. He's going to be kind of green too. Like, uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I might make him blue. Not, not skin tone. Maybe like a pale, 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 pale white. He's more spookiness. He'll get there. He'll get there. All right, I need to, uh, let's tighten up, tighten up the graphics. Spoopy, that's what my kids say. He's very spoopy. <laughs> there we go. And I want to uh, fix this transition. That's why I changed to Sculptress Pro in the first place. Build up this nostril connection. <laughs> that's, a, that's like a curse falling on. That's like some, cursing somebody. <laughs> you will only have red wax on Halloween. <laughs> no! Wait, wait. That is scary. <laughs> oh. Okay. I'm going to make this. I want to make his lips scoop in like. Like that. <laughs> but it's super flat from the front now. Let's get his. Pulled back. I want him to smile a little bit. Because he's about, he's a happy guy. Just going to get some, some blood. Blood. <laughs> kind of noobish. I, I tell you not to do that. <laughs> Turn Sculptress Pro off so I can smooth this out without it chunking out on me. Okay. Spam time. Thank you for spamming, you guys. Or Mortar. Thank you very much. Um, just so you guys know, if you're, if you're watching for the first time, or if you need a, a reminder, um, I give away these, this user interface and my brushes over on my website. It's 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Check it out if you want. I also have an online course if you want to learn more. I teach how to use ZBrush and make game characters and how to 3D print your characters. A lot of my students are in here today watching along. And the course is open right now. I haven't closed it since the ZBrush Summit. I decided I just want to leave it open for a while. Because it's gotten to the point where it's not a huge rush of people coming in, so I can actually handle it. Okay. Thanks, Caitlin. Caitlin's done a ton of 3D prints. Thanks for joining, Phantom. Yeah, if you want, if you have any questions. Uh, they're not too specific just to the course and um, you can ask them I can hopefully answer okay oh you did you watched the whole thing um, Craig Kelly I I'm working on one right now uh, it's not a course 
but it's actually it's an add-on. So I I fashioned my kind of business. What do you call it? The I'm tr my my brain is fried, but <laughs> I fashioned the way my course works, kind of like PixLogic works. So with ZBrush, you buy it once, all updates are free. I love it. I've loved it since I bought it way back in the day. And I thought I'd do the same thing with my course. So if you buy my course, then all updates are free. I really, really like that. So um, I will be updating my course with a new module that I'm working on. And it's all about stylized character anatomy. Okay. I just want to put in some little, little vampire teeth. So I try to add content as much as I can, as much as I have time for. I do student feedback sessions. I have another one going up this week. Um, I do student challenges. I do um, industry pro interviews. And for those student challenges, which is what's really cool about them is I always get people that I know in the industry. And it, when I say the industry, it's not just game industry. It's also film, collectibles, television, depending on what the challenge is. And I have them come in and, and judge, judge the student challenges. And my, I, I currently have a student challenge going on right now. It's a Halloween challenge that ends very soon. And I have some guest judges coming in that I'm super excited about. Very, very pro. And, uh, and then I usually make a blog about it. I, I need to get, I need to update the blog because I just changed over the design of my, um, of my homepage. I've put a new video up there, promo video, and watch that. It's six minutes long. I just talk about the course and the amazing students. And I get all I get all emotional about it. I can't talk about it without getting emotional. <laughs> I just can't. I tried several times and I just I couldn't couldn't get through it. <laughs> Things practically done. <laughs> it's getting there. It's getting there. What are we at? An hour and 13 minutes? Ah, oh, we got a ways to go. I want to make his, his neck smaller. There we go. Kind of fix this a little bit more. I really like this, kind of this double chin thing happening here. Got to keep that. Okay, I'm gonna give him a high collared cape, you know, in the back. And uh, let's move on to, let's do, yep, I'll, I'll be having another one. I, I typically do a challenge per quarter is what I like to do. So if you miss this one, get in on the next one. And if you wanna get in on the challenge, sign up for the course and join us, it's awesome. Okay, let's make an eyebrow, an eyebrow. Make some eyebrows. Okay, let's see. I'm not liking the back of his head, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yep, <laughs> yeah, you guys haven't distracted me as much, that's for sure. I kinda want the back of his head straight. Let's get it straight. Okay, and let's just make it go straight down to the neck and smooth it out. And then let's pull this forward. Now this is an example of um, another thing that I see students do is they get stuck. They're like, 
I, I don't know what's wrong. I, I don't know how to fix this. I know that something's wrong. I don't, you know. Um, so the best thing you can do is explore. Don't be married or don't feel like you're stagnant and you can't just go crazy with it. What I mean by that is sometimes, like I feel like the transition from his neck going to his back is just wrong and the, the neck going down to his chest is wrong. So what I wanna do is I wanna swing that whole thing so his head trans, uh, just kind of flows down and make his back straight and then make his chest come down and then out. So what, how do I do that? Well, you might try and like mask it and pull it and just start doing all these different things. But when I say explore, don't feel like you're stuck. Don't feel like you're like, well, I don't know what's wrong. So what you can do is duplicate off your mesh. That's almost like saving a version of it. Just, just duplicate off the mesh and just start pushing and pulling and just going crazy with it. And you'll explore and you'll find what Bob Ross says, happy accidents, right? You'll be like, oh, now it's working. Now I can see how it's, how it's broken. You can just kind of swing things around and fix things and pull. Just go crazy with the Move Elastic Brush. Um, you can also do this with the T-Pose Mesh as if you're going to pose it. You can use T-Pose Mesh to um, change your proportions in a big, big way. Like say your entire model is way too wide, okay? Uh, but the head is fine. The head is nice and round and the proportions are nice. But maybe you got the character completely clothed and standing in a T-pose, but you're just like, your art director is like, she's just too wide or something like that. So what you can do is you can use T-pose mesh, mask off the entire head and just use scale and just scale her entire body and all of her clothes and everything. You might need to fix her hands or something like that, but you can really just explore and push it. You don't need to, you know, to, to worry about that kind of stuff. So that's, that's what I'm just doing. Um, I'm just gonna explore with this guy and I just wanna kind of swing, swing this neck forward into something like this because I want his attitude and his pose to be a little different. And you'll notice you're gonna, you're gonna probably break it. You're gonna bust it. So you can see where I've broken his, essentially just broken his back and broken the chest. So now what I'm just gonna do is come in here and fix it the best I can. So let's see. And the lower your geometry, your, your poly count, the easier it is to fix. So if, you, if this was Dynamesh or something like that, it would be much more difficult to fix than if it was low. And I, could, I actually wish this was a little lower than I have it. But since I was using Sculptus Pro, it's, it's a little more difficult. Okay, so his, I wanna make his nose not quite so long and make it sharper. Okay. Oh, wipe out, come on. <laughs> but that's, that's kind of the beauty of the course too, though, is um, it's, uh, it's, it's lifetime. So, you know, if you're, if you're too busy now, get, get to it when you have time. It's meant for the people that are busy. And just, you know, just work on it a little bit here, a little bit there. It's not going anywhere, hopefully, anytime soon. Whoa, too fast. Yep, I really like Sculptures Pro. The only thing I don't like about it is the surface, the surface quality. It just kind of gets, it gets textured. You know, you can, you can kind of see that it gets textured. So. Me liking to work super duper smooth and clean, it really fights against my, my brain, my OCD brain, I guess. I like that you, I, can build, um, I can build up surface from nothing, or forms and volume from nothing. I really like that about it, but I don't like that it's not super clean. Okay, let me... Uh, Whoops, clip this off. Smash. There we go. And I come in here and smooth that out. Uh, I don't want that. 
Let's turn off Sculptus Pro and just smooth that edge out. But yes, very, very flexible. I love it. All right, Emma, thanks for stopping by. Have a great week. <laughs> All right. He needs a beer gut. <laughs> yep. Well, like those, you know, those old man, those little pooch guts, those little, just a little round ball stomach. Yep, and then when you get but when you get super tight with your with your brush, um, then your machine starts to slow down. So yeah, you it depends on the size. You can see what Sculptus Pro has been doing to the surface of this. So when I want really tight details, I get a really small brush, and then it makes small triangles. But if I were to make the entire mesh this size of triangles, which would make it smooth, it's a little more difficult to manage. And, um, and it will slow your machine down. So it's like this, this balance, right? This fine balance of back and forth, as you know. Um, so eventually I will uh, Z-remesh this and then clean up all of the surface texture, I think. I might just leave it Sculptress Pro. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> all right, take care. Oh yeah, yeah, that's D-Studio, that's, uh, I call that super smooth. So yeah, when you, I, I think I use that super smooth more than regular smooth. I kind of wish it was the default, but what DD Studio is talking about is if you're starting to smooth, let's see if I can show you. If you start to smooth, it will actually contract the mesh and shrink it down. But if you start to smooth and then as you're smoothing, you let go of smooth, it will actually re release and relax the, the mesh without losing as much volume. It's really, really nice. I use it, I use it a ton. Like I said, probably more than regular smooth. Give him a straw. Oh yeah, it's like <laughs> for sure. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a an eyebrow. Here we go. Eyebrow, eyebrow. I said I would draw it like what 15 minutes ago, and it's been that long. I want these pretty sharp. Let's see. And then go to thick and then back to thin again. Yep, tension. I'm I'm working on it. So, I'm working on it a ton. I'm trying very very hard to update my course with these new methods. Um the thing is, I'm I've been trying Z remesher is very unpredictable. So I've actually been working with the Pixelogic guys to figure out the predictability of the Z remesh. Um, and yes, I'm going to update those very soon and it has been a while. I just got these new lights because I want to be on camera for the new lessons. And I'm, I'm working on that for sure. That's why while you're waiting, I released some new videos. They aren't actual lessons, but they are videos talking about these methods. They're in the, uh, the, the bonus section. If you go to the bonus section down in the student um, feedback sessions, I do cover this stuff there, but I haven't officially covered it in, in, the, in the course yet. So, but thanks. Thanks for the question. I need, I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> it's, it's coming. Yeah, the Pixelogic keeps updating their dang software with awesome stuff. So I'm trying to keep up. And then, you know, we got folders coming. That's another one. Folders. We got folders. <laughs> All right. I know. All right, Barry, take, take care. Next week. See you next week. <laughs> yep, ZBrush folders, they're coming. It's like the thing that everybody wants that they've been asking for for a long time. They've actually got a standing ovation.
I stood up. Boulders. It's huge. It's going to be huge. <laughs> right? Bigger but organized. Organized. That's, that's the biggest thing is just... It, sub tools can become just a giant mess in your file. So I'm just excited about the ability to organize... Excuse me, let's see, split unmasked points. Oh, come on. That's not what I want to do. There we go. Split unmasked points. I just want the eyebrows and the... There we go. Let's see, something like this. I want this side more pointy. actually yelled <laughs> shout out I'm like we got folders during the summit I was obnoxious because I was excited that was me if you listen to it probably hear me shout like a imbecile Just pushing these into the head a little bit more. <laughs> I know, right? It's something that, uh, yeah, just like other programs have had for a while. But, you know, it's, uh, I talked to him about it a long time ago. And just the way they've written the program, it, it took a lot of reprogramming to get something as simple as that in there. Because when ZBrush started out, it was just, uh, it was an illustration program with, with, you know, 3D elements. That's what it was meant to be. It was never meant to be a, a professional software when the, the original programmer first created it. It was just meant to be for fun. And he just wanted to make, you know, just an illustration program like Photoshop or something like that, that just had 3D elements that you can just put in there and make 3D stuff from it. But it just, it just happens, you know, that, um, that, you were able to do millions and millions of polygons and get tons and tons of detail, which got the attention of big studios like Weta and ILM and stuff like that. So then all of a sudden it's like, wait, we can use this to detail out the surface of our characters. So um, that's when it that's when it started to become bigger than it was. Um, and that kind of changed the whole history of the program. That's why it was never... And, you know, a 3D program like, like Maya or something like that. It was never intended to be something like that. That wasn't the original idea. It just, it just morphed into that. Okay, let's see. Split to unmasked points. Right, Justin? <laughs> Can't wait. Uh, Tenshi, no, I didn't. That was my, my buddy Brad Bolander. Yep, illustration with de depth. That's why they're called... What did they used to call them? Pic pixels? Pixels? I don't know. Oh, you're still catching up on my current videos, but the older ones show multiple methods for adding thickness to the poly brush. What's your preference in ZBrush? Are you talking about like adding the thickness for the eyebrows? Um, pixels, that's right. <laughs> so my my... My preference is I just use whatever I need at the time. Sometimes I will use uh, ed, uh, panel loops. Sometimes I'll use panel loops. Most of the time I use Z model or extrude. I will just do that. Sometimes I'll just use uh, the topology brush when I'm drawing on the surface. Then you, when you just tap, it will create thickness based on the size of the brush. If I don't need to do anything fancy, I'll just use that because it's fastest. It's quickest, whatever you want to say. Um, but yeah, most of the time it's just either that or Z modeler, something like that. So I'm going to give this guy a crazy huge widow's peak. Um, let's see. And you can use Z remesher kind of like Dynamesh. And what I mean by that is when you're when you're modeling with Dynamesh, when you start to uh, 
stretch polygons, you'll typically re-dynamesh to get rid of those. And you can do the same thing with Ziri Mesher. 2018, no, it doesn't have a better way. It's, it's the same. So basically, I'm going to drag this down the, the back of his head to kind of get the hair where I want it. And then fill in this area here. And you can see it's stretching those polygons like crazy. So then what I can do is um, anytime I want, I can just go over here to Z Remesher. And I'm going to turn my poly count way down to like 0.18 or something. Hit Z Remesher. And it's just going to give me more polygons down here. I can smooth it out and just keep going. So then I don't have the high polygon count that Dynamesh gives me. I still have a, a, a usable polygon count that I can still keep smooth while I continue to push. Oh, I totally could, Babu. I will. I will. I'll do that. So he's like all like a vulture. <laughs> That'd be good. Doug, you come from the pixel days. Talking about the pixel days. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, nice. Thanks, Tenchi. Awesome. Okay, so again, I'm, I'm uh, messing with these polygons. I'm stretching them out. When I get to here, though, you can see that it's getting really bent out of shape. So if I hit Control D and subdivide once, maybe twice, then I can move these around a little bit more. But, and then I can Z remesh, but I need to get rid of the lower subdivision levels first. Then I'll Z remesh it again. I'll crank this just a little bit, maybe 0.5. And now it'll give me the geometry that I need to continue. Okay, I, I want to do kind of a little peak right here and then back and then down, like something like this. Let's turn transpose off. Start to work on the thickness. Something like this. Okay. That's kind of, uh, typically what I'll do is I'll get the, uh, the hair line done first. And then I'll work on the, the actual volume of it after that. So let me Z remesh one more time. Hey, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. Okay, now I'm going to pull, uh, I'm going to use pinch and just basically give this an, an edge, like a border around here, around to the back side, just so his hair is like nice and boxy. And then I'll pull it out with move after I get this, this kind of shelf built. You can come back in with smooth if you made it a little too sharp. It looks like a hat, kind of. <laughs> it's funny. Okay. Just kind of move that up. And then I want this to be really sharp back here. Hey, Sven from Germany. Welcome. How's it going over on Facebook? Sorry, Facebook chat's not working. So I have, to watch, I have to watch Facebook and make sure I see your chats. Draco Malfoy? <laughs> That'd be fun. I'd have to pull up reference to remember, remind myself what he looks like. Whoops, whoa. I meant to pinch. I meant to pinch. Okay, I'm just, I'm just going to pinch along the edge. That's why I like to Ziri mesh uh, and get the flow, the workflow around here, because then it gives me geometry that I can pinch together. It's a good suggestion though, Stephen. 
<laughs> okay. Let's go pull this in, pull this out. Just want to continue those uh, kind of those sharp edges. <laughs> Mortar, that's awesome. <laughs> they were just like it would just look like pictures, you know, like a photo album of normal people. All right, I kind of want the weight of his hair to be in the back and kind of scoop to the front. And I can also use. Uh, I'm going to use polish to kind of push that down. You can't really tell that it's doing anything, but from the side you can see that it's like whoop, boom. Okay. Okay, I want to pull up these sides from the front just to kind of give it direction before it scoops down. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, man. Mendy, thank you very much. Um, I, I chalk it up to experience. I've just done this for so long and I know just kind of what what direction I'm heading, I guess. That's the key. Know where you're going. Make this go up and around and then bring it in so it's, he's not looking so thinning back there. There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, here we go. Let's see. Let's push in these ears <laughs> I want him to kind of be holding up a like a nap like a, a napkin that he's gonna tuck tuck in like you know he's like bringing up a napkin or something okay um, let's see where are we at 137 I want to give him a collar before too long because you know collar big old collar so since I don't really have anything to draw the collar on, I'm gonna make one. Um, or I'm gonna just use a cylinder and extrude it. That's probably what I'll do. So when you don't have the geometry or you don't have something to draw onto the surface like I did with these eyebrows, which I need to pull these up a little bit. I keep seeing stuff, sorry. <laughs> um, basically, you just make, you can make the geometry to draw on or you can just throw in temporary geometry and make it out of that. So under my primitives, I have this cylinder. What I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure the gizmo is where it needs to be, which is reset. Then when I pull it out of here and I hold down shift, it should reset itself. Now this cylinder is a quad cylinder. It has, that means it does not have a pole at the, at the surface, at the ends. Gosh, I can't talk today, sorry. All right. Oh, Spin, <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, so there's there aren't any poles at either end. That just means a quad sphere. It's just made of quads. Basically, what it helps you with is you can use this for all sorts of things. Um, and you'll also notice it doesn't have any segments or loops going down the length of it because that way I can make cones and you know I can put in more detail if I want and then it also comes pre-creased which means it already has a crease around here so if I subdivide it it's going to maintain those edges without getting subdivided so uh, what I want to do is split this off so I'm going to hit split on mass points and then go down and now it's in its own sub tool and I can raise this up here uh, let's go about right here. This is going to become its, his collar. Basically, what I want to do is get rid of a bunch of 
Yep, or a dunce hat. <laughs> oh, wipe out. Yeah, you do. Get on it, man. Okay, I want to get rid of the top and the bottom, the caps. So what I can do is I can say group by normal. And what that's going to do is put the bottom in a group and a top, the top in a group. Now, what I can do is just click on these, hide them, and then just hit delete by hidden. Okay, I'm going to turn on double so you can see it. Then I can do select lasso, hold control plus shift and tap on this edge. It's actually going to hide the front. So this is going to be where the collar comes around. It has that cut in the front. Okay, and then I'm going to delete hidden on that. Now I have this collar that I can shape. Okay, now what I want to try is one of these bend deformers. Let's see. Um, whoops. Come on. Let's see. I'm trying to remember. I can do a taper. Try a taper. Whoa. Okay. There we go. Taper this up and taper this. Oh, it doesn't go past what it is. Okay. Well, we got the taper. That was easy. And then when you're done with this, all you need to do is um, click on this guy and say accept. <laughs> Tenchi, sure. I actually, um, I'm going to be interviewing Brad. So as soon as he's in town again, he's actually from Utah. He lives in San Francisco, San Francisco right now. He works for uh, Supercell on Clash of Clans. And I actually saw him at the Zbar Summit. He was hanging out, super cool guy. And he's agreed to a pro interview with me. So we are going to do it as soon as he is back in town. He'll probably be back in town for Christmas, I hope. And we will talk about Spider-Gwen for sure. For sure, for sure. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm just going to grab this and rotate it. Whoop, come on. Why don't you stick? Oh, it's pin is turned on. I accidentally hit pin. And rotate it like this. So basically the bottom of this is masked off. It's just to give him that high collar. There we go. Blah. Yes, I will be putting it in the course. Ghost of Christmas Future. What's going on, man? Haven't seen you for a while. How you doing? You're a little early. <laughs> All right. Try to stop me. All right, Folly Gone. Thanks, man. Take care. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for hanging out. I'll, I'll try and catch your stream. Please tell these fine folks when you were, being, you were going to be streaming again. You said 6 Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Time, correct? I believe that's what you said. Close. I'm going to go close my course right now. <laughs> oh. There we go. I'm liking that collar. All right. Let's, let's straighten this up. Now, you can see how the bottom of this is kind of a mess. You can easily clean that up. I'm just teasing. <laughs> you can easily clean the bottom of this up by using the clip curve. All you have to do is kind of uh, put that in here somewhere. You have to have the mask off, okay? Put that in here somewhere, let go, and it just cleans that edge right up. Really nice for low-resolution meshes to clean stuff up like that. But I do want to shrink this in more. Like this, just a bit. This looks like a collar of shame. You know those that they put on dogs <laughs> so they don't lick themselves? Collar of shame. All right, let's push this in so his back actually matches the collar a little more. Okay, and I had a request to make his neck 
be like a vulture. So I just remembered. So let's do that really fast. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this whole area back. You know what? It's easier to do this if I have a lower resolution mesh. So we're going to we're going to try it. It might break it. In fact, it most likely will. Here we go. Duplicate this. Hide the original. Then we're going to Z remesh this very at a at a higher count, like a let's try 14. Um Okay, we'll see what happens. Thanks, Andreas, over on Facebook. Sorry, I'm not really paying that close of attention to Facebook chat. I'm sorry, it's not working correctly. Okay, so here is what it did. Let's look at it. Okay, it's not too bad. That didn't lose too much. Awesome, okay. But now we have this nice, nicer surface. Okay, we got rid of that sculptress geometry and we brought in smoother. We can go back in and use a uh, pinch to go back in and tighten, tighten up some of those graphics, <laughs> tighten up some of the edges. Okay, now we're gonna push his whole head forward. But instead of doing that, because it's, I don't wanna push the whole eye, you know, the eyes and the teeth and everything like that, I'm actually gonna work in reverse and move the base of his neck and his chest back. So then I don't have to mess with any of that other stuff. Okay, so let's, let's mask this off. And the lower your geometry, the easier it is to work with masking. Because if you were, uh, it just, when you go to blend and blur stuff like this, if you have a lighter surface to work with, that blend happens much quicker. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this back like this, and I'm just looking at the front, ignoring the back. The back is getting broken. Um, but I'm gonna give him this really silly vulture neck. Okay, now let's fix the back. Okay, my smooth is very low. Okay, what's going on? Is there masking? No. Okay, I'm gonna switch to a smooth, stronger brush, which is under brushes. Where are you brushes? Smooth and smooth, stronger, right there. Okay, there we go. Then it'll happen quicker. So if your smooth isn't as quick as you want it to be, just use smooth, stronger, go get that. Now we're going to pull this little funny Adam's apple out. Make it smaller. I just want it. I don't want it to call too much attention to itself. Whoa. Okay. And I want this neck to be more. I'm, I'm looking at this, this shape. Let's see. So this straight right here. And then I want it to go like that. You're in. Awesome. Yay. Hooray. Welcome. Make sure you get in the community. Looking forward to seeing what you do. All right. I'm liking that. Now let's fix that collar. Let's fix that collar. Turn it like this, shrink it up, and thanks for joining us, I appreciate it. I didn't mean this to be, I, I, I'm not a sales guy, I hate to be super sales pitchy, but it is my full-time job, so kind of, I have to sell it. <laughs> okay, I want to make this kind of swoopy. Spoopy, swoopy. Yep, okay, yep. I gotta, I gotta talk about that. Google Plus for now. Oh, you guys probably heard the news. They're shutting down Google Plus, which is okay. Google Plus is just okay. I'm not crazy sad about that. But um, 
I'm going to be I'm going to be moving the the student community. I have I'm forced to be moving it somewhere else. <laughs> Unfortunately, again, this is the third time. You've been emailing me for like six months. Oh, asking me questions and stuff. I hope I haven't ignored you. I try to answer everything, but I get a lot of emails every day. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. And I want this this collar to kind of follow his neck, what, what his neck is doing. Okay, awesome. All right. And I'm just gonna make a very quick kind of the cape that's that's coming off of him that can, will continue from here. And then I, I want to do some kind of a, I don't know, what are those things called? Uh, where the, the clasp, where the cape is in the center, where it's holding it together. There, okay, what are we at, 151? Okay, we're gonna probably go a little over time. I wanna add color to this guy. So, it is what it is. Next time, scope a secretary? You know what? Uh, one guy in the course, it's, um, his, his name is Matthew, and I'm trying to remember, it's Matt, Matt2D is what he goes by. And I stayed with him once at CTN, he's a fantastic guy, really great 2D artist. Um, he's also in the course, but recently he drew some, some older ladies and they're just super appealing. They're very Disney-esque looking. I love, you know, just the Disney style, of course. Um, and I might, I might sculpt one of them before I get started on the, the project, as it were. You know, I'm trying to find a project to do. I was thinking about maybe asking Matt if I could sculpt one of those old ladies because they're really good. Hey, what's up, Patrick? All right. Um, Tenshi, go to do the do the the head. Just I I made that little extra bonus thing just for people like you that do not know where to start. Just it's a three part video that it's like a miniature morsel bite off version of the entire course. So that's where you should start, um, and just make a head just like I'm making right here. Oh, so she can help with the course. <laughs> yeah, Matt 2D. Yay, thanks, man. All right, yeah, cool. Those warbles, those are, it's pretty funny, man. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna quickly draw, not see remesh, topog, topology brush. So basically, I'm just gonna make kind of a matching thing that comes off of here. I'm trying to match the same loops that I already had in the collar. And I honestly, I, there's so many different ways I could do it. I could cut in a line in that collar, bring it down and, and pull it out. But it's a little bit easier if, I'm, if I do it this way just because it sticks to the surface of what I currently have. Okay, and then we'll go this direction with this one. There we go. And one more time. Hello over on YouTube. Um, no, you should get an email telling you how to join the group. No worries. Yep, should get an email. Okay, I wanna keep this single-sided. I don't want to add thickness so I'm just going to go down to draw size one tap on the surface and it makes a single sided surface it's kind of buried in there you can't see it so all we need to do is hit split on mass points hit your down arrow to select it and you can kind of see it there also inside the course is uh, at the very very top it says community you can also click there and go right in Just kind of put, pulling that together, 
pulling this down. This is kind of his cape. So I think I'm going to pull it way down. Hey, what's up, Dainty? How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Just trying to get this vampire wrapped up. Thanks for joining us. Wrap mummies up. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's that's pretty good. I'm just gonna put just a big circle or uh, sorry. I'm just trying to hurry now at this point. Just kind of trying to rush a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna grab another insert cylinder. Whoop! I need to reset that gizmo every time. What? It is. It's fine. Okay. I'll just draw it from the surface and let it be. Okay. Then I just, I can just squish it down to represent that clasp. I'll put some kind of design on it later. Split off masked points. You can see I just kind of repeat over and over the same kind of thing. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Eamon. Yeah, these lights are new. I just barely got them. There's two of them, and they're new LED lights. And uh, they're, yeah, I just got them off of Amazon. So if you're into video, you want to do some video of yourself, they're fairly cheap. And they, what's nice about them is you can adjust the temperature of them. So they're, they're really nice. Side effects, <laughs> gross but awesome. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's a compliment. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna add some thickness to this guy using the Z Modeler brush. Just kind of pull it up like that. Okay, and I need to fix the edges here. Let's do the same thing to this, just add some thickness. And I'll have to do the same thing. Oh, thanks guys. I appreciate it. Okay, so I need to, I just need to crease these edges. So I can just go crease, pop, pop, done. Ah, kind of like it how it rolls across there. Okay. And edge loop partial. There we go. Kind of like the shape of that. Then for this, crease this edge. Oh, come on. Sometimes it's hard to pick the edge. And I like how this is turning, like it's the collar of the cape, you know? Then I'll just pull this cylinder out. Let's see, let's push this in. There we go. He's like, blah. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm, I'm liking how he's turning out. I was kind of worried because I'm just like, oh, I'll just shoot from the hip and see what happens. It could have been a total train wreck. Okay, let's add some color to this guy, shall we? Um, where can I make an online... I have one online course that is for the game industry, absolutely. So it, it's also for the collectibles industry, so for games and toys. I take you through the toys. I don't show you exactly how to manufacture the toys, like doing the keying and all that kind of stuff, but I do take you to how to prep your model for 3D printing. Um, but most of all, I, ha I tell you how to turn your ZBrush model into a, a, a game character. So, um, let me see. And I give away my brushes and my, my user interface. So if you go to, here I'll show you really quick. 
so if you go here, this is me. This is my little promo video I just put up. It's still a work in progress. But if you want my brushes, all you have to do is click on this bar right here. You can get my brushes and my user interface and my ruler file. They're all right there. Um, then I'm going to log in really quick. This is where you log in if you've bought the course. And this is what the inside of the course looks like, if you want to know. Here's the course itself, and you also get these bonuses. Um, this is the mail mini bus course I was telling you about. Uh, so this is where to start if you're brand new to ZBrush. If you're brand, brand new to ZBrush, I built, I, I put the, together this early beginner walkthrough where I hold your hand. It's actually, I'm holding Adam Manoa's hand because he, he was, it was like his very first day opening ZBrush and I walk him through. Um, anyway, if you go into here, uh, this is, these are the modules. I have seven modules and the seventh module is how to make a game character. So that's this game character creation. I also teach you how to pose um, and basically all this stuff. And I'm in the middle of updating a bunch of stuff in here. So, and it's taken me a while. Anyway, it's gonna be updated very soon. So there you go. <laughs> that's a little bit, I don't wanna to get too much into it. This, I don't mean to be a, make it a sales pitch, but if you wanted to see inside the course, there you go. Um, okay, so I'm going to color his hair. And one thing you want to do is you never want to go 100% black on anything, okay? Go like somewhere in this area in the color picker, okay? I want to make him kind of a bluish, purplish hue, okay? And then we're going to grab this hard paintbrush and hit fill. And that's going to fill his hair. It is going to fill everything temporarily. I'm going to fill his eyebrows and his cape. Okay, maybe I want, might want to make his cape a little more on the blue side. So let's do that, let's do that. Okay, now let's go back. I'm going to try some kind of, there we go, some pale, pale skin color like this. I like that. Okay, and then we're going to fill the skin. Oh, looks like I didn't fill the cape with this color. Okay, why in the world? Oh, let's see. Okay, it looked like I filled the collar rather than this one. Okay, there we go. All right, and you also on the, as, as far as white goes, you don't want to go 100% white either. Always come in to about 10 to 15% around there. Okay, you don't want to take it completely white because if you get in, into a game or into a rendering engine or something like that, the lights are just going to blow it out. They're just going to push it way white. So you never want to go completely white. So for example, yep, totally lavender vampire. So like these teeth, um, I'll start with this color and then I'm going to make it kind of orangish yellow. Pull it up to about here and fill them. Whoa, that's his whole face. Are his teeth part of the? Okay, looks like I have to split, split hidden. Okay, I wanna go lighter, a little bit lighter than that. So, there we go. Something like that, we'll do the same thing with his eyes. Okay. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you so much. Um, I need to come in here and just I need to clean up these edges. They're, bug they're bugging. This is kind of left over from the Sculptress Pro mode after I Z remeshed. So I'm just gonna run a clean edge. I'm just using the pinch. Just want a really clean edge across here. You wonder if vampires go to the dentist? <laughs> Things that, things that keep you up at night. Okay, now this bottom lid is warbly. Let's fix that. All right, Lucky, awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Lucky. 
That's rad. That's rad. I'm a kid from the 80s. It's rad. Thank you very much for the testimonial. Where do I send the check? <laughs> okay, now I want to... Whoa, too, hard, too fast with the smooth. Turn that down. Still too fast. Because I'm on smooth stronger. So that's going quite fast. Okay, loving this guy from the side. Um, I want to get a little more pronounced jawline. Kind of run. Just a hint. I want to get the old smooth brush back. Get the old smooth brush back because it's way too harsh. There we go. That's better. <laughs> you can play a record on. He's like. <laughs> okay, now let's put some color into this guy. Well, let's. I want to make this this thing kind of a complementary gold. Golden. Something like this. Okay. Now, I want to add some some color into this, like warm him up. Basically, he's all cold colors right now. His eyes are a little warm, but they're still on the cold side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a kind of a reddish pink just to warm him up. And I use this soft paint. This is essentially just like an airbrush. Blood, blood. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's make sure we're on the head. Yep. All right. And then I'm just going to slowly introduce this warm pink color. There we go. See how much that adds Tell me lies. Hey, that's a that's a song. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a vampire killer. He kills other vampires with his nose. Make his nose nice and pink too. So basically what you where you put the, the worm is where it's fleshy, where there's not really much there's no bone underneath. And in his cheeks. There we go. Uh, Eamon, what are you saying? Right mouse button use at middle click or pen setting for movement? Oh, so I'm using, uh, it's right click navigation. And basically I set the front button to right click and then I use Alt right click to, to pan, and then just right click to rotate. So I'm not I'm not pushing anything with my keyboard, and um, and then if I hit Control, I can do Zoom right click. So that's essentially <laughs> Ghost of Christmas Future, right? It's like <laughs> oh, too funny. Thanks, Alex. You're torn between. 3D and 2D, Eric, son of Bruce. <laughs> nice name. Uh, I'm torn between 3D and 2D. I'm not sure which to pursue. I think both are awesome, but not sure which to focus on. I'm a little older, but would love to try and get into the gaming industry, which would be better for me to pursue first. Well, there are tons of people that actually do both. Okay. Um, there's uh, like... Um, Mike Thompson, he's another streamer on here. You should definitely check him out. He is an illustrator that uses 3D, that uses uh, ZBrush to uh, help with his illustration. So that's another avenue you could go. And it doesn't matter how old you are. You know, it, honestly, I'm, I'm getting up there in age myself. There's a lot of people just starting out at my age too. It doesn't matter, you know, just if you're, if you're wanting to get into it, get into it. The, let the passion drive you, right? Um, 
And uh, yeah, Mike, Mike is fantastic. So you should definitely check him out. Um, and there are a lot of sculptors that draw. I just don't draw myself too much. Um, so if you're getting into games as a 2D concept artist, that's a little harder to break into the industry as a concept artist because it's just there, there are already, there, there are fewer positions. And um, if you're going into 3D and you want to get into the game industry, there are more positions with 3D modeling. There's not just characters, there's also props and uh, like doing the worlds and things like that. So uh, as well as characters too. Um, characters kind of, is kind of the glory position. So there's there are fewer character positions than there are any other modeling positions. If you really want to get work in the industry, be a rigger, which you rig the characters to be animated. That's the position that there's a lot of demand for. Okay, sorry, I need to, I should be done by now. I'm, I'm over time, so um, I hope that answers your questions, but I'm just gonna put some eyeshadow in here. Just gonna work the shadow in. Hey from Germany, how's it going? So do you put dual texture on a single part of a model? like a wall having two different textures or colors. Oh, you can totally do that. Yeah. Sure, Eric. My pleasure. Sorry, I can't ramble on about it. I could, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to get this done here. There we go. I want to put some of this darkness into his, uh, his eye bag as well, even though it's warm. I really want it dark right along that crease. <laughs> Side effects, thanks. Yeah, I love I love doing doing sculpts like this. Just like a little one-off, you know? It's like let's just have let's just have fun making a head. That's something I can get done during a stream. A couple hours. It's just like a it's, it's my creative outlet, honestly. It's the thing that keeps me doing personal projects every week. So I like it, I really enjoy it. And I like talking to you guys about it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, the money and demand is pretty good. That's for sure. Everybody wants to get into games. Like all the, all the kids, all the kids these days. Yep, they all, they all want to work in the game industry because that's all they know. That's all they do every day. That's all my kids do every day. So right now I'm just kind of putting in some fake ambient occlusion. Just to push these shadows a little further. Well, <laughs> it would take you a couple days, not a couple hours. Here's the thing. It's taken me a lifetime, right? That's what everybody likes to say. It's taken me a lifetime to get here. It's not, it's not like it's just taken me a couple hours. It's taken me a couple hours physically in time right now, but it has taken me a lifetime to get here, right? Never, never stop learning. Okay, let's get some... Uh, let's, I want to make his his eyes have some redness to them as well but i when it comes to eyes you need some resolution so here we go let's they're sitting at 72 or 772 active points i'm going to subdivide that up to about a million so we got we have about 800,000 now that's good Yeah, you yeah, lucky you have to you have to kind of put those off. And uh, you know, don't get caught up in what other people are doing. I know it's difficult, but you're on your own your own train, you know? You you can't you can't worry what other people are doing. They're on their own path, you're on your own. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Everybody starts somewhere. 
Oh, I have dynamic turned on. That's why. I don't want dynamic. Curse that dynamic. Okay. There we go. Just some red. Oh, I got to make that. Yep. I'm going to hurry and do that. I got to make that Widowmaker even pointier. <laughs> pointier. Right. There we go. Yeah. All right. Count Lavender. <laughs> Count Lavender. All right. Another thing you can do is come in here with even whiter whites. Whiter whites. How to get your whites whiter. And uh, just kind of hit them. Like make his cheek a little brighter. Is that not working? What's going on? And just up in here. What's going on? Whiter. Yeah, I don't know why it's not doing much. Okay, um, let's let's make, give him some pupils, shall we? I might I might give him no pupils. I like him as he is now, so we'll have to see. I need to make an insert multi mesh that's just kind of half a disc. Because I do it every single time. I just make a, a point. Let's see. Duplicate. I do this every time. And I need to... Anytime you're doing something over and over again, it, it's uh, good practice to just give yourself some, something to help you. You know? Skate to where the puck is going, not to where it's been. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Justin, that's like... Justin dropping knowledge bombs. <laughs> awesome, man. I'm going to borrow that and quote, quote you if that's, if that's okay. <laughs> or where'd you get that from? That's great. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I'm, I'm going to, I always tell people I'm, I'll be learning till the day I die. That's how it works. Okay, uh, da -da, what was I doing? Oh, right. I was making a sphere 3D. Multiple subdivision levels. Oh. Okay, sphere 3D. Basically what this does is it replaces the current sub, sub tool. And I can't see it. Come on, solo. Where are you? Is it really tiny? Really? Okay. Well, all right, that'll work, except Hey, Dante, no, I have not. That's going to be, if I, if I do that, that's going to be a while. Yeah, I wish. Okay, let's turn this. I'm just going to delete. Why? Okay. Whoops, there we go. I want to make it smaller. Let's see, get rid of that. Hide, hide it, or delete it. There we go. Oh, thanks. Thanks so much, Tenchi. It's Gretzky. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh. You have to come up with something similar so I can quote you on it. <laughs> but it makes sense that it's Gretzky, right? <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm just going to make a circle. Let's uh, build this on the wrong side. We need to mirror it and then mirror and weld. Let's show everything. Oh, we're going to show everything. Let's go hide all our old heads, not that one. 
All right, and I got the ruler up there, it's hide that. And he looks cross-eyed. Cookie Monster eyes, <laughs> totally. Or uh, count the count, blah. Let's fill these guys. Look, he's got, he's uh, cross-eyed right now. Okay, I want to. Move these back. Hi, Cream. Thank you. I hope you can join us again. There we go. Let's see. I wanted to feel kind of sleepy. So I need to adjust his eyelids now. Yep, just stoned. He's stoned on blood, right? He's like, Rose, some good blood. <laughs> yeah, just focus on, like, I put a fly on the end of his nose or something. Um, one, one fun thing to do if you build eyes this way is you can fill those, um, the irises with the toy plastic material, and sometimes it gives you a decent highlight. So basically what I'm gonna do is go over to here and click on, whoa, what in the world? Okay, yeah, it looks like it might not give me because his eyes are too covered by his eyelids, but I'm gonna fill it anyway. So then what you do is you click on material, hit fill object, make sure you hit RGB again so you don't accidentally do it again and then you switch off of toy plastic. I don't know why I have the flat colors, like a bajillion of them. <laughs> Eamon, make a, a bat version. That's not a bad idea, just like with the same head. He's like, lol. Okay, um, I'm gonna subdivide his eyes down a little bit. Now if I tilt him like this, you can see the highlights in his eyes. That's from the toy plastic, and that works pretty well. That works really well when you have a character that has, that's stylized like this. Okay, so um, I'm gonna grab his eyelids and just kind of move them around a little bit and change his attitude and make him just a little more stoned. <laughs> a little more derpy. It, isn't it crazy how, how much, just a little bit of movement can change his entire attitude? like his expression. All right, <laughs> I wanna put, uh, I do wanna put a dark line along. Uh, it's, it's, I don't have enough geometry along there, but. Okay, really quick. Let's see. Party all night, sleep all day. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> really? <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right, gotta give him the heavy, the heavy lids. And Boom, eyelids, eyelashes, sorry, eyelashes. All right, split unmasked points. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh... Steven, that's hilarious. Tell him hello and thank you. <laughs> so they're not actually clapping for me. They're clapping for some presentation but it sounds like they are. That works, I'll take it. <laughs> like a laugh track. They're like, <sighs> there we go. Okay. Convenient timing. <laughs> nice, okay, one last thing that I can see. I wanna tighten up, tighten up his nostrils. His nostrils are a little loose. 
I always see something and I can't, I can't let it go. It's like one more thing. All right, you guys, I think I'm going to call it. Let's put it in perspective. Let me add some, apply the dynamic to this and make it just a little smoother. There we go. All right, happy Halloween, kids. <laughs> there you go. Yes, thanks, Tenchi. Uh, or thanks, Moon Mix. That's, that's how you can send me something. Do you suffer from loose nostrils? <laughs> oh, too funny. All right, guys, thanks, thanks for hanging out with me today. Um, like I said, you can always grab this user interface and these brushes and my ruler file from 3dcharacterworkshop.com. And I just barely posted a new promo video over there. It's still a work in progress. I'm still working on it, but it's really close. If you'd like to check that out. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, so um, anyway, uh, my course is open right now. If you want to go join us, we're in the middle of a, or a, a student challenge where I challenge the students to come up with some Halloween collectible. And that is going to finish up soon. And I always have celebrity, celebrity judges come in, which is essentially industry pro people come in and judge these, the student character challenge, which is always fun. And it also gets um, professional eyes on, your, on the student work. I'm not one of the judges myself. I just like to get it in front of professionals and so they can be like one day, hey, I remember you from that student challenge, you know. Um, it's all about networking and stuff like that. So anyway, yep, thanks for the stream. <laughs> You're welcome, you guys. Um, and thank you very much, PixLogic, for having me. It's always a pleasure. And also watch the other streamers on here if you're interested in anything else, like uh, jewel jewelry tonight. Uh, T. Whittleback is going to be streaming tonight. I can't remember exactly when he goes on, but he'll be streaming tonight after me. He'll go live. It's always really fun to listen and watch him make jewelry. And um, Ashley will be going on, I would she say, Wednesday? And, uh, and Folygon's going on, I think tomorrow, is that what he said? At, uh, at six, so um, that's six Eastern. So if you wanna know when people are going live, you can always go to ZBrush Live. Just type ZBrush Live in your, in your Google searches, like so. And you can click right here, and it will show you exactly who is going when. So here's Thomas right here, Tomas. And there's me, Eamon went earlier today. So if you wanna know when anybody is streaming live, just go check this out where I'm streaming live right here. You can also watch it right here live on the ZBrush Live website. So anyway, guys, thank you very much. This is like the new Count Chocula guy, but he's like Count Violet <laughs> or whatever. Anyway, uh, oh, 5 a.m. your local time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, thanks guys. Have a great week. And we will see you guys next time, next Monday, same time. Cheers. Take care.